this tutorial on how to capture footage from your tape based video camera into Adobe Premiere Pro. Now we're going to be using the capture window in Adobe Premiere Pro but before you can do that you need to ensure that your camera is connected to your computer via Firewire. That's iLink or IEEE interface. So if your camera doesn't have Firewire then you can't follow this along. And I realize that in some respects this is almost an obsolete tutorial because a lot of people won't actually be capturing from tape anymore. They'll be ingesting footage from some sort of solid state memory card or, or hard drive. However, there are a number of people that still use mini DV tapes. And if your camera is equipped with an iLink or a Firewire input, you can connect it to your computer and then you can set it up so that you can capture the footage from your tape straight into Premiere Pro. Now the advantage of this is that you can audition the tape and select the actual bits that you want to use inside your project. It's a slightly slow process because you have to go through the tape but anyway even if you've ingested footage you still need to preview it to check out and use the bits that you want to use. The other advantage of course is if you do it this way then you don't have massive files sitting on your system all over the place taking up hard drive. When you've got a tape, a tape holds something like 4.6 gig of information, something like that, and you can just select the bits that you want, move them to your hard drive and edit with them really quickly. But it is more work and it is a slower process, that's why a lot of people are going to ingesting from solid state devices. Anyway, so how do we do it? Well I've got a camera, it's an HDV video camera and I've got it connected to my computer via Firewire and I've opened up Premiere Pro and I've opened up a brand new project with nothing in it. So now I need to capture the footage from my tape. Now I'm only going to show you a few examples of taking footage off the tape so that you can learn how to do it for a whole tape and save yourself a lot of time. Now to do this with your new project you go to the file menu and you notice down here is the word capture. Notice it also has a keyboard shortcut and if you use tape at all, mini DVs, you're going to learn this F5 and F6 pretty quickly. So click on the capture or hit F5 and a new window comes up. Now if your camera is connected and switched on to VCR mode, it should come up saying stopped. Sometimes it can ask you to reset the camera, but one way or another it should come up with stopped. However, if it says can't do it, or it's noted the camera but can't actually move forward, sometimes you need to go to your settings tab over here, click on the settings tab, and make sure that your capture settings are the same as your camera. Now my capture settings are set to HDVs, therefore you can see my camera. But if you click the edit button here, you'll see that you've got a drop down and you can change that to DV. And if you actually open it up in DV, you'll see that you get can't activate recorder, try resetting camera. It's actually that you've got the wrong capture settings. So I'm going to go back to edit, I'm going to go back to HDV, click OK, and then it comes back and it says stopped, which means the camera is waiting for me to start doing some work. Now, while I'm in this settings dialog, let me just show you where is it going to put the captured video and the captured audio. Really, you shouldn't put them on the same disk drive as your program. If you have external disk drives or different disk drives, what you ought to do is browse to those disks. Now, I happen to have a different video drive on this computer, so I would move it to E for my video drive. And for my audio drive, I have a D, which is an audio drive. So I actually have drives for individual audio and video. And this makes it a lot quicker. Uh, for this particular example, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it with the project. But generally speaking, it's very wise not to have your captured video and your captured audio and your conformed video and your conformed audio on your C drive. It's much better to have them on separate disks because it's going to work an awful lot quicker. The other settings are fairly straightforward. Let's go to the Logging tab. Click on Logging tab. Now the first thing we see is where is it going to log those clips to? It's actually going to log it to wherever the project is saved. And you can save that project either on your C drive or again it might be useful to save it at a different drive. Now when it comes to the clip data, this is actually pretty important. You need to name your tapes. And once you've named your tapes, you need to also make sure that you write the name on the actual tape itself so that you remember what name you have given it when you write the clip data down because when we do a batch capture Premiere Pro is going to ask you for the name of a tape, a specific tape so it's very important that we give it a name so I'm just going to call this one Rothwell which was where it actually happened to be filmed and then we need to name the actual clip now we want to select the name and just type in whatever it's going to be I'm going to call this a water vole because that happens to be what it is 
and then you can give actual descriptions to each one of the takes that you're going to take. Now for the sake of time I'm not going to give descriptions but notice you can give a full description, you can give a scene, a take and additional log notes. This is metadata and as I read in a blog recently somebody said that Adobe are getting religious about metadata. Well the advantage of this metadata is that it travels with the actual captured clip so that you can search it and easily find it later on. So you can turn around and say, okay, it's scene one, shot two, and on the log you could actually put good shot, bad shot, medium shot, whatever it's going to be. I mean, you wouldn't capture a bad shot, but, you know, a good shot or an excellent shot. So you can actually have all this data, and then you can search that data later on to be able to find a clip really quickly. Okay, we'll come to these bits and pieces down here in a moment, but let's actually look at our standard controls. This is showing us where we are on the actual tape. This is going to show us an in point that we select and again we can use the either set in point I and set out point O or we can click these actual icons set in point and set out point and that will then update these particular time codes to show us what the in point and the out point is and the total duration of in point to out point. This is going to take us to the previous in point and this is going to take us to the out point. We've got play, we go forward one frame and play fast forward backwards one frame and rewind and we've got a standard shuttle for moving forward and backwards and jog to move forward just a couple of frames at a time. Standard controls that you're used to already seeing in the source monitor and things like that. The other controls that we have here are pause, stop and record. I'll come to record in a minute because there are a few options and also something called scene detect and when you click scene detect what actually is going to happen notice that scene detect is also selected over here is that Premiere Pro looks through the footage that you take in and works out every new scene that you've taken. Now I don't tend to use Scene Detect because I like to tell it exactly what I'm looking for, but if there are new scenes it can tell there's a new scene and breaks it up into individual scenes, which is actually very useful. Now you can just hit play and record and record what comes straight out of the camera. And sometimes for something very small that's a useful way of working but by far the better way of doing it is actually to do a batch capture where we're going to set the in point and the out point for the clips that we want we're going to log all the clips as we work through the tape and then we can tell Premiere Pro while we go and have our lunch go off, sort it out and get all those clips for us now let's just look at the footage, I've got a water vault here so I just click play and it shows up in my monitor here and I'm looking for an in point, I'm going to hover over this key as soon as I start seeing the water vault, there we go, in pops out of his hole, has a little look around, pop back in again, that's out. Now I've done an in to out. Notice the in point is shown here and the out point is shown here, so it's about seven seconds or so long. Now the first thing I could do if I wanted at this point is I could click in to out. And when I click in to out it would rewind the tape, go to the in point and start to record and then the out point and stop recording it would give me however many handles I've put down here. Handles are spare frames that it puts at the beginning at the end and if you're not sure you've got it right you can put 25 or 30 frames one second before one second after so that you've got editing wiggle room so sometimes I would knock that up to say 25 is occasionally the most I would go to often it's something like 10 frames just to give me that little bit of wiggle room so that if there's a problem I've got a little bit of headroom and tail room so I could do in to out and it would rewind and do that but what's the point in doing that? I'm only going to have to then go forward and find the next clip and the next clip and the next clip instead of doing in to out I click this button here which says log clip and as soon as I click log clip it comes up with the different bits and pieces that we've seen before now I'd already named it water vol over here so it's come up with the same name and we've got all the descriptions and bits and pieces that there would have been I can make changes, I can make alterations and as soon as I click OK, I want you to look over here in the project panel. Click OK, and up comes a placeholder. It's got that little sign that says the media is unlinked, but it has remembered the in point and the out point and put a placeholder into my project panel ready for me to link the media a bit later on. Now I know there's a few more clips in here, so I can click play, and I can move forward. I can use my shuttle and just pull, pull forward on my shuttle until I find the next clip it's pulling me forward, oh there's another vault, water vol over there well I've gone too far so I can go jog backwards ok and I can click an in point there for the second water vol, click play 
Right, click my input in there. There's the second water vole having a look out of his hole. Has a little look around. He's going to stay out a bit longer this time we can see. And he pops back in his hole, so I push stop there and just click log clip. Now I didn't push stop that time, but notice that the tape has actually paused while I log the clip. Now it will give me an incremental name. So previously it was water vole, now it is water vole 01. I could give it a different name if I want, usually I would and I'd have different descriptions and bits and pieces, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to click OK and go on to the next bit. Now I know the next bit is a bit further down the line, so I'm just going to pull the jog wheel forward so that it goes a little bit faster. Now there we've got another water vole, and this water vole's going to do some swimming, so I click my in point, water vole's in, and there he goes. And I've got a swimming water vole, a little bit of more interest. Water voles are actually quite rare in the UK now. We've got mink come along, and the mink like to eat water voles, they're their favourite food, so they're actually quite a rare rodent. Click my out point, and then log the clip click log clip and I might call this one swimming water vole under normal circumstances but again to save time water vole my new description would be in click OK and what you would then do is work through your whole tape and you'd have a whole series of blank placeholders I'm going to push stop on that one and so you go through the whole tape all your different placeholders would be in place and then what you might do is actually load another tape in and do exactly the same thing and you could go through all of your tapes and log everything and then, once you've finished, you just shut down your capture window, and then you select all of your clips. So, using the shift key, I select the top one, and they're all selected. Then you can either hit F6, or you can right-click and do batch capture, or file batch capture. And immediately a new dialog box comes up. And the dialog box has got a couple of questions for us. Do you want to capture with handles? Well, we've talked about handles, and I say, actually, do you know what? Yes, I do like handles. 10 frames is probably enough, 11. And override capture settings, well, I don't really know why I'd like to override the settings that I've just set up. So, no, I'm not going to override the capture settings. It is going to capture as HDV. Click OK. It then comes back and says, please would you insert the tape Rothwell? Now, this is going to ask me for all the ones that are on my first tape Rothwell. Once it's captured all of those, a new dialog will come up saying, please insert the tape for whatever the name of the next tape is. So what you do is you click OK. Premiere Pro rewinds the tape that you've put back in and starts to capture it, and you have your lunch. And then once it's done, you come back, it will be asking for the next tape because it will have captured all the bits and pieces that you want. So as it rewinds to find that first in point for the first clip, the water vole clip, it's seeking it. Now you will not see the bits and pieces up here. Please notice it says playing on video hardware. You will only see this if you've got some kind of matrox capture card or some kind of capture card that can show you. But you can see up here that the capture is actually taking place. And now it's going to move on to the second one, which is just down a bit. And again, it's telling you capturing. Capture duration hasn't started yet. And you'll see in this particular one, it's actually dropped it. So I'm going to push stop. Because this is sometimes a problem that you can have. If you look at the time code down here, it's 1354, whereas it was actually looking for 1339. So it's actually missed the point that we want. And occasionally you can have problems with that. Now I've actually stopped the batch capture. You'll see that the first one has come on, and the other two haven't. And I've got a little capture log here. You can double click on that to open it. It gives me a little message saying one was captured and two were aborted. Okay, well, if I've had a problem, what I can do is I can try and capture them again. So let's try that one. So I selected them both with the shift key. And I'm going to do my batch capture. So I'm going to right click again and do batch capture. And it's going to capture with handles again. Click OK. And again, it asks me to insert the tape. Click OK. It's going to rewind looking for that first clip. Notice it's at 1339 and it's actually rewound just before it and then it's going to start playing and then as soon as it gets to the right place assuming everything's all right there you go this time it's picked it up sometimes you do miss clips and that can be quite annoying so it's not a foolproof system the only thing that you really do need to worry about is ensuring that you've got time code on the whole of your tape 
if you have time code missing, what I mean by that is you've actually recorded something and you've watched it back and you've gone past the end of the clip so that there is blank bits on the tape and then you push record from that point so that you've got time code so the tape has actually recorded time code up to the end of the previous clip and then there's a blank spot on the tape without any time code and a new bit starts Premiere Pro isn't going to know what to do with that and it can have all kinds of problems so you need to make sure that you've got time code on the whole of your tape without any gaps or else you won't be able to do batch capture well that's how to do batch capture with tape in Premiere Pro I'm pleased there's been a problem because you can see that it's not foolproof, but generally speaking it works very well. One final thought. Make sure that you do not start to capture bits and pieces on your tape within 30 to 60 seconds of the beginning of the tape and 30 to 60 seconds at the end of the tape. That's because it takes a while for Premiere Pro to be able to pick up the beginning of the tape and for the end of the tape and if you've recorded within a couple of seconds of the tape starting Premiere Pro won't be able to rewind and pick up the time code sufficiently fast enough to be able to start to capture it so I always do 30 seconds or so 45 seconds and quite often I use tones and bars on my camera so I can calibrate my equipment so you record for 30 seconds and from that point onwards you know that it's easy for Premiere Pro to pick up the time code on the tape so that it can actually capture the bits and pieces that you're trying to give it. Well, when it's finished it says batch capture finished. We didn't abort it this time. I can click OK. It's finished. It's ready to go. And if I want to do other bits and pieces I can. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.